Did North Korea just violate the UN resolution? Uh, yes, it's repeatedly done so in the last few years. And, and you know, here, here's why this matters. What it says to not just North Korea, but to all of our foreign adversaries is that you can fire off missiles, you can threaten our allies, you can even kill an American, as Kim Jong-un's regime did. And so long as you flatter the President of the United States, so long as you insult his political enemies, you get a pass. And I, I worry not just about what message it sends to North Korea, but to Russia, to China, uh, to other adversaries of ours around the world. Let me play for you what President Trump said at the end of the failed summit with Kim Jong-un back in February about how much he believes Kim Jong-un. Listen to this. One of the things, importantly, that Chairman Kim promised me last night is regardless, he's not going to do testing of rockets and uh, nuclear, not going to do testing. So, you know, I trust him and uh, I take him at his word. I hope that's true. He's not going to do testing of rockets, not going to do testing. I take him at his word. What does it tell you that the president of the United States falls for what Kim Jong-un says? I, he just seems to be an easy mark for dictators who flatter him. And, and you know, that's disgraceful and we can bemoan it. But what's more important is that it's dangerous because, because men like Kim Jong-un and Putin and Xi Jinping see this behavior and they learn how to take advantage of it, to do things that no other president would allow them to get away with. And, you know, we, we have got to... Um, in the United States Congress, I think we, we've got to um, act to, to ensure that the world gets a different sense of what America is about and what we stand for. Do you think it's OK that President Trump insulted former Vice President Joe Biden, though he is now a political rival of President Trump's, while he was overseas? Well, of, of course not, and it's disgraceful. But, but again, what's more important here is the message that it sends to our allies and our adversaries around the world uh, about, well, how easy it is to manipulate the president of the United States. If I'm Kim Jong-un, I, I insult Joe Biden, and, and suddenly Donald Trump is on my side and he forgives a missile test that is threatening South Korea and Japan. It, it, and, and, you know, it also, frankly, just bothers me, although some of my Republican colleagues in, in the House of Representatives have have come out against this, just, just how, how much silence there is on the other side. You know, if, if a President Obama or a President Hillary Clinton had said something like this, I, I think my Republican colleagues would be skipping right over the impeachment stage and talking about the 25th Amendment. Uh, and, and yet, it, it's, it's just become normal. And, and we cannot allow this behavior to become normal. It's unimaginable to think of what would have happened if President Obama or a hypothetical president, Hillary Clinton, would have said this unimaginable, the heads that would have exploded on the Republican side, um, as you point out. But you raised the issue of impeachment. So where are you today with that? <laughs> you know, even as early as a week or two ago, I wasn't there. But at this point, enough already. And, and here I've got to say, you know, I think the House of Representatives has been doing its job the last few months. We've been passing bills to lower drug prices, to protect health care, to keep our kids safe in school. But we also have a higher responsibility. And for me, it's not just about what Mueller told us, although that's bad enough. It's, it's about telling people to defy legally binding subpoenas. It's about using the Justice Department and now the intelligence community against the president's enemies. It's about accusing the FBI of treason every single day, trying to turn millions of Americans against law enforcement in our country. There has to be some institution in Washington that holds the line, because if nobody holds the line, the line just disappears. And, and we're not going to recognize our country if we allow that to happen. But I mean, of course, as you know, practically speaking, the Senate will never go along with it. And so is it an exercise in futility? Is it a waste of time? I mean, you know, the president said that you all in the House and Democrats, I suppose, can't do investigation and legis uh, sorry, yes, investigation and legislation at the same time. 
So would you just be spinning your wheels? Uh, no, it's, it's not about that. It, it is about defending the rule of law in America. It's about establishing that there are some things that you cannot do. And I think that, that the House of Representatives, we need to at least commence an impeachment inquiry at this stage to establish that there are still rules in American politics that cannot be broken. And if we do our duty, and at the end of the day, the Senate does not do its duty, well, the shame will be on the other side. And I believe that the American people will make the right decision in 2020 based on the evidence that we lay out.